everyone, how's it going? So, it's been a while since I've made a video, so I decided I would come back with the classic Red and Blue series, and a Pokemon a lot of people had been asking me to do for a very long time. In fact, there are surprisingly few videos on trying to beat the game with just a Chansey, and when looking at these stats, uh, it's pretty easy to figure out why. Chansey has the worst base attack and base defense in the entire game. In fact, even to this day, it's one of the worst. Its special attack is also not that great. Only base 35 power? Yeah, it's not going to really be doing much damage at all. Until you realize that this is the wrong generation, because there is no such thing as special attack. And if you look at the very bottom in small text, you'll see that in Generation 1, its base special is 105. That's... that's pretty good. And... for that reason, I do think Chansey will be rather simple to beat the game with. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna restrict myself to just using physical moves. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm totally doing that later. But, for now, let's see if we can beat Red and Blue as fast as possible with a Chansey, and our first obstacle, as you could expect, is Brock. Now, Chansey has an insanely good move pool. Like, pretty much every move you could ever want it to learn, it can learn via TM. Unfortunately, though, that doesn't help prior to Brock, and until level 24, when it learns Sing, Chansey is stuck with, at least in Red and Blue version, Pound and Double Slap. Now, Double Slap is kind of useful, because even though, normally, it would be way worse than a move like Pound, which is base 40 power, the fact that it's multiple times for minimum damage means instead of doing 1 damage, you're potentially dealing 5. So, yeah, Double Slap is gonna help. Th that said, I mean, it's not gonna go well. Yes, we have a lot of HP, but our defense is pretty bad. Brock, at least the first Geodude, has Tackle. But even once I managed to knock the Geodude out, which wasn't too difficult, the real problem was the Onyx, mainly because it knows Screech. If Onyx just used Bide, we were fine. Normally, Bide is a huge problem, because whatever damage you deal is dealt back twofold. But because we're dealing such little damage, Bide was typically only dealing 4-6 to six damage, which for a Chansey is nothing. The issue is, it would have to use Screech only a few times and then a Tackle, and half my HP would be gone. So, it took me a really, really long time to do this. I thought I'd have to level all the way up to level 24, and luckily, Chansey's in the Fast Experience group, so it wouldn't have taken nearly as long as some other Pokémon we've done, but in the end, I actually didn't need to level all the way up, which is kind of nice. In fact, as you can see, I was able to defeat Brock at level 20, and the strategy is just use Double Slap. Now, unfortunately, Double Slap has a 15% chance to miss and only a 12.5% chance of hitting five times. So we can't rely on Double Slap as much as we would like. Eventually, we're going to have to use Pound. But with good enough luck and a very clutch tackle miss by Onyx right towards the end of the battle, we were able to persevere at level 20. I was surprised. I really did think I would need to teach Sing and use that, but... Yeah, pretty happy with this result. Now that we have defeated Brock, we can make our way to Mount Moon, and here is where the run just changes completely. In Mount Moon towards the left, actually as we save, 2 hours 33 minutes. Remember, my original Mewtwo run was 3.03. So, yeah, that's how long Chansey is taking, but like Abra before it, the run is going to speed up because we get access to a special move, Water Gun in this case. Now, I believe this is the only way Chansey could ever learn Water Gun, but it can. And from this point forward, we pretty much are only going to be using special moves, with one exception, that being Misty. Water Gun obviously not too helpful against Misty being base 40 power. It does way more damage, and in fact, does close to the same as Mega Punch, despite the fact it's, well half as base power and not same type, but I mean base 5 attack for Chansey. And because I was unable to defeat Misty, I instead decided to go battle Rival 2, and Water Gun actually was a little bit better than I expected. In fact, Water Gun is the reason I had the Rival pick Squirtle. It really didn't make much of a difference because Chansey has such great coverage. Literally every single Pokemon 
I had a really strong move, at least for the final battle. But for this and one more reason, I thought that Squirtle would prove the most difficult. In the end though, really wasn't that difficult, it was a first try victory. Sand attack is always an issue if you get hit by that, so that may cause a reset. But overall, our HP and our level are high enough that it's not really a big deal to make it past Rival 2, especially because the final Pokemon, Squirtle, mainly relies on special attacks, and our special is so darn high. Once we get past Rival 2, we are going to battle one extra trainer I don't normally battle, so that we can get access to Seismic Toss. Now, this is not required to get Seismic Toss, but you would need Cut, and in order to get Cut, you need to beat Misty, and as you could expect, Seismic Toss is going to be used for Misty. And the truth is, for as many great moves as Chansey is going to learn, the only special move it gets for a long time is Water Gun. So, yeah, Seismic Toss is our best bet. The way Seismic Toss works is your level, so in our case 27, is dealt to the Pokemon as damage. So that's a two-hit KO on Star You and Star Me. Eventually you'll see a Bubble Beam, it does nothing. Big difference between using Mega Punch, which can miss, and Seismic Toss, which both can't and just obliterates Misty's Pokemon. So now we actually get access to another special move, but it's also a water move, Bubble Beam. And with Bubble Beam, we can make just absolute mincemeat of rival number three. Really not a whole lot going on there. The one thing I'll mention at the beginning is it would be nice if Bubble Beam were a 1-KO on Pidgeotto because Sand Attack, thankfully we don't get it. You also might notice we're not at full HP. I was trying to shave off a little bit of time by not healing and digging after I defeated Lieutenant Surge right back to Cerulean. I do that a lot, but with Chansey it's extremely noticeable since I have just so much HP. And will I be able at the HP I have remaining to defeat Lieutenant Surge? The answer initially was no, because Voltorb knows Sonic Boom, which deals 20 damage. And that actually does a little bit more than something like Tackle would. Of course, if it doesn't use Sonic Boom, you can defeat the Voltorb rather quickly. The one problem we're now going to run into, though, is Chansey is also rather slow. So it has problems in defense, doesn't hit that hard, at least not in later generations, and is extremely slow. I can see Chansey being very interesting in later generations to use. But for now, by using Bubble Beam and getting a little bit lucky with a speed drop, we are able to defeat Lieutenant Surge, and now we get access to the most powerful move we've had to this point, Thunderbolt. And yes, it is in fact an electric attack, but we could get ground down by a Marowak. Okay, that's from a song. Any of you who remember that song? Pikachu's Jukebox. Now that is some nostalgia. I also should bring up that a lot of people seem to think I could beat Lieutenant Surge before Misty. That is impossible. Misty is required to use Cut outside of battle. There's no way to access Lieutenant Surge. In fact, there's no way to access the rest of the game until you defeat Misty. So now that we've done so, we can easily make our way through Rock Tunnel. And at this point, the game is kind of our oyster. We can get Ice Beam from the Celadon Mart, which I do, which replaces Bubble Beam. And we could get Psychic from Mr. Psychic. I didn't. Instead, I decided to do the Rocket Game Corner. And at this point, Chansey is one of the strongest Pokemon I've ever used. I mean, not the strongest. I've used a lot of strong Pokemon. But with that massive HP stat and that pretty decent special and the move pool, that's the key thing. Chansey just can learn everything. Giovanni is an absolute joke. In fact, it would be an extremely long time until I lost. After defeating Giovanni, I go on to absolutely obliterate rival number four. To be fair, the easiest rival maybe in Pokemon history, aside from some early ones. So that's really not an issue, especially because we have such amazing type coverage. In fact, you'll notice I have Sing. I never used Sing in this run. That's how great Chansey is. There's no need to even use Sing. You just attack things and they faint rather quickly, and when they don't, I have more than enough HP to make up for that. And when you combine that with my high special, and consider the most difficult Pokémon for me to face in most of these runs are special attackers. So that is a massive point in Chansey's favor. Anyway, now that we've gotten through the Pokémon Tower, it's time to go battle Erica. 
and I made sure that I write down Battle Erica because I seem to forget to battle her every time. She's pretty easy. You can just use Psychic if you want against the Poison Pokemon or just use Ice Beam. Again, these are all special attacking Pokemon, so there's really nothing to worry about from Victory Bell, Tangela, or even her signature Pokemon, Vileplume. Although I think it's actually Gloom and Blossom, but that doesn't matter. Now that we've defeated Erica, we could go to Sylph Company. In fact, that probably would have saved a little time. I instead decide to go to Fuchsia first, and while I didn't actually lose, the Juggler was a little difficult because they have strong special. So that's an instance where Chansey is going to have maybe a little bit of a problem against Sabrina, although my special is really good too. Koga, on the other hand, I could have lost. I didn't. I just used Psychic and I won, but... Psychic was not a one-hit KO against everything, and look at that significant damage that was dealt by the Muck. If Weezing had used Self-Destruct, obviously I would have lost. Thankfully, I get fairly lucky and I don't get the 1 in 4 chance, but yeah, I, I could have easily lost a Koga, so in retrospect, it would have been far smarter to go to Sylph Company before going to Koga, but whatever. It's, it's not a big deal, it didn't really cost. Now we go battle Rival Fival, and definitely a little bit more difficult than Rival 4. Now, I actually battled Rival Fival three times, but it would surprise you to learn I won the first time. And you see right there why maybe I needed to reset. The sand attack from the Pidgeot was brutal. I ended up getting quite a lot of misses. Otherwise, Rival Fival is a complete joke, to be honest with you. I mean, his best Pokemon are Blastoise and Alakazam. And as you're about to see, neither of which can do any damage at all. The bigger problem is that because I missed with an Ice Beam on the Execute, it was able to hit me with Stun Spore. And between the decreased accuracy and the Paralysis, this battle ended up taking a lot longer, which isn't actually why I reset. In fact, I didn't need to. I thought I didn't have my full restore anymore. And I didn't want to be paralyzed for Giovanni because, you know, I figured that could result in a loss. So I just battled Rival Fival again. But anyway, perhaps it would have been smarter to go to Sabrina first. I think I galaxy brained myself and went to Blaine. In the end, Blaine wasn't so bad. Unfortunately, for all of Chansey's moves, there are no moves that are super effective against fire Pokemon except for Bubble Beam. And it just simply does not make a whole lot of sense to keep Bubble Beam on Chansey at this point of the run. So I battle Blaine without a super effective move, and it actually goes really well. I get a crit on the first Thunderbolt, so down goes Growlithe. I get a Parahax, only 10% chance, and the Ponyta doesn't attack. So yeah, that's some pretty crazy good luck, but it actually gets even more ridiculous, if you can believe it. Thunderbolt still does over half the Rapidash, and it misses with Fire Spin, so I actually haven't taken any damage yet, but that will end against Arcanine. Arcanine outspeeds me. The classic Blaine, full health Super Potion, Anyway, after being hit with a Fire Blast, I finally get hit by Takedown. It does some significant damage, but Arcanine, I mean the recoil didn't matter, but that's a lot of recoil, and we're able to knock it out. So even two Takedowns, I would have been fine. And yeah, I could have lost this battle, perhaps with some really bad luck, but overall, I guess battling Blaine wasn't that big a deal. Anyway, we only have two gyms left, Sabrina and Giovanni. For Sabrina, I decided to use the Badge Boost Glitch. Yes, we will be using it because Chansey is just so darn slow. And the way to do that is by using any move that modifies Chansey's stats until it levels up, it gets a 12.5% boost in all its other stats. So that will make Chansey a little bit faster. And we have Defense Curl. I think of setting up versus Kadabra, then realize, wait a minute, Psychic can lower my special, which would be very bad. So instead, best to set up against Mr. Mime. And once we're done setting up, I meant to use Psychic, I accidentally used Ice Beam, and it still knocked out Venomoth in one hit. Of course, I do level up. So while I have my defense boost from Defense Girl, they're useless, and I no longer have that extra speed. Didn't end up mattering. Alakazam really didn't do all that much to me. And Chansey is absolutely obliterating the competition. And that wouldn't stop at Giovanni. Because although you would think Giovanni would be difficult, aside from Doug Trio's dig, just doesn't have good attacks on any of his Pokemon. And of course, we have Ice Beam. 
I mean, yeah, I'm at 33% of my HP, but still, in terms of total HP, 111 is some Pokemon's max HP at this point. So, yeah, I think we're doing pretty well. But now we move on to the more difficult battles in the run, and I did actually lose to Rival 6. And the way that happened was actually pretty much against Pidgeot, hit me with a few critical hits as I was setting up defense curls, and as you know, critical hits ignore my defense buffs anyway. That's why I thought it wouldn't be the worst idea. Now, in the successful battle, I don't get the range, and yes, it was a range, to knock out Pidgeot in a single Ice Beam. So my HP is a lot worse than it could be, but I should be fine, question mark? Rhyhorn I'm not worried about, so that's two down. And I guess I should clarify that I actually reset another time because I noticed I leveled up before the Growlithe. And even though Growlithe does have takedown, I'm not too worried about it, and so I'm just going to set up some defense curls. The reason for this is Alakazam with Psychic, it can lower my special, and that can be a pretty big deal. So I would like to knock it out in one hit. I thought I would be able to after setting up the way I did, but in the end, I wasn't. Thankfully, Alakazam did go for Reflect, which is fine. And of course, as you'd expect, Blastoise did absolutely nothing to me. We knock it out in one hit. And we're ready to take on the Elite Four, and just as a matter of comparison, my time from Brock to Loralee, I believe, was the fifth fastest, despite the fact we still had to use Double Slap a little bit after we defeated Brock. So, that just really emphasizes how good Chansey is. The question is, whether or not the Elite Four will be as easy as the rest of this run. I accidentally saved in Loralee's chamber, which isn't great, so I might have to lose if I actually can't do this at this level. Let's hope I can. Take one. So my strategy for Loralee, because I was worried about Jinx specifically, is to set up some defense curls, boost my stats, and sweep. Unfortunately, a couple things got in the way of that. The first was a critical hit from Dugong via takedown. Of course, takedown had to be the one that crit. I was hit with Growl, so that is four boosts. I used Thunderbolt, it obviously knocks out Dugong. It then knocks out Cloyster, and of course, Slowbro, but I level up after Slowbro. Literally the worst time to level up because Jinx has Thrash and Double Slap. More worried about Thrash, to be honest. And Thunderbolt's not doing that much. Jinx has very good special itself. And then, of course, I get hit with a critical hit Thrash. So, yeah, I'm going to say that was not ideal. Let's try that again. Since the reason we badge boost was primarily for Jinx, I'm not going to bother wasting my time. I just go for Thunderbolt. You can now see conclusively how much the badge boost glitch matters, because that obviously was not a 1 KO. Although I get hit by a Growl, so that is going to help me. I knock out the Dugong. Cloyster's not all that bulky, so we're able to knock it out in a single Thunderbolt. Now comes out Slowbro. It's going to take multiple hits, but the only attack it can use is Water Gun, so yeah, not really worried about that. I could have taught Mimic here instead of Defense Girl and Mimic Amnesia, but eh, I didn't do that. And I actually make it to the Jinx at full health. I decide to set up a few defense curls, and you can see that crit from the Jinx's thrash really did matter. With my increasing defense, and eventually when I do go for Thunderbolt after 3, I get the paralysis on Jinx. So I'm actually over half HP for Lapras, and I'm thinking this could win a KO, but I'm not sure. It shouldn't matter unless I get frozen. And that's also what I was worried about with Jinx with Ice Punch. Well, Lapras is pretty bulky, so I'm not surprised, and hooray, we're not frozen. So, that is Loralee down. Overall, not too big a deal once we realized when we need to badge boost. And now we have to take on Bruno, who I think should be pretty easy. I mean, you know, that's pretty much a standard at this point. But I am a normal Pokemon against a Fighting-type Elite Four member, so theoretically it could be difficult. Speaking of which, for whatever reason, Bruno doesn't use all the fighting Pokemon and instead uses two Onix, and the first one I outspeed and knock out with Ice Beam, one down. Next is Hitmonchan, I go for Psychic. I don't know if the crit mattered, but I knock it out, so that's two down. Now out comes Hitmonlee, outspeeds me, uh-oh. Uh-oh! Oh my gosh. I almost lost to Bruno completely unironically. Not... Oh my, wow, uh, and if Machamp decides to use Submission, we lose. So we're gonna knock out the Onyx, and here's the moment of truth. 
All right, we're out speeding, and no, Fissure's fine. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's not really that stressful because Laura Lee wasn't that difficult to get past, but like, losing to Bruno is an achievement in of itself. It definitely would be a pretty massive blemish on this run if we had a Bruno loss. So, very grateful Machamp cooperated. Probably should have set up some defense girls to badge boost, both for speed and for defense. Well, actually, that's not even badge boosting. That's what defense girl does. But I am delaying the inevitable. The Agatha lottery, I'm going to get outsped. I'm relying on special attacks. But Nightshade's not going to do that much because I have so much HP. And Dream Eater's not going to do much. This could be fine? Question mark? Let's see. Like always, she leads off with Gengar, I decide to go for Psychic, it hits me with Confuse Ray, but I'm able to use the Psychic, and eh, that's not great. I mean, I wanted it to 1 a KO, I knew it wouldn't, but thankfully, I'm able to hit the second Psychic, so that is one Gengar down. That's actually pretty good, at full HP, I'll take that all day every day. Now I am still confused, and Ice Beam will do slightly more damage, so I go for it, I hit myself in Confusion, my attack's so bad it doesn't matter, Golbat goes for Confuse Ray, so that's fine. Turn 2, hit myself in confusion again, and supersonic. Alright, I think I should snap out now. I in fact do, and 1 a KO. So we're pretty much at full HP for the final 3 Pokemon. This should be easy, right? Well, I knew Haunter would outspeed. I go for a defense girl to try and boost my speed. Such a weird thing to say. And of course, it puts me to sleep. Now, this isn't the end of the world, but you can sleep for like 8 turns in Gen 1. And if that happens, that could be a problem. And, wouldn't you know, I stay asleep for not one, two, three, four, or five turns as we zoom by, but I'm in fact asleep for six turns, and immediately upon waking up, I am put right back to sleep. I'm already confused, too. So that's pretty bad, and if things weren't looking bad enough, Haunter ends up swapping into Arbok, and while I'm awake, I'm still confused, and after being damaged significantly by a physical attack and bite, I hit myself in confusion, and there goes the Agatha Lottery. Winnable, yes, but of course, we needed some luck we didn't get. So that was take one, or I guess technically take two, because we lost to Agatha. So let's try again in a second. I'm actually going to lose intentionally to Laura Lee. This was totally my fault because I saved within Laura Lee's chambers. I've never done this before, or at least I should say I haven't done this in years because I don't like to save between Elite Four members, so I know to save outside in case I need to go back and do anything. So I'm very frustrated, but I will gain a little bit of experience points, and I'll be able to manipulate my experience points a little bit better, I think, so I can badge boost glitch more effectively. So I guess technically this would make it my fourth attempt, even though attempt three wasn't a genuine one. Whatever, we're splitting hairs here. I'm going to call this attempt three. Let's go. And for Laura Lee, I'm going to use the exact same strategy I used in my victorious battle. So no setting up defense curls, because I'm going to level up after Slowbro still. And I'm just going to, well, not one-shot anything but the Cloister, but I'm going to probably make it through with full HP. Wouldn't really matter if I got attacked a little bit. And if you saw that, it's pretty quick. 36 attack at level 53, man. Could you imagine doing physical attack only, Chansey? That would be like the worst thing in the world. And speaking of physical attacks, very rare Jinx's physical attacks are scary, but they are. Jinx goes for Thrash almost immediately, which isn't a big deal unless it gets a crit, which it can. And I'm going to go set up my three defense curls once again. And my HP is, is decreasing pretty significantly. Of course... Even though Jinx is confused after Thrash, it does decide to hit me with an Ice Punch. Don't get the freeze, and I'm able to knock out Jinx. Now we have to worry about Blizzard from Lapras, even though it could use Hydro Pump. I don't get the crit, which is fine. I don't even know if a crit would have won a KO'd, and... Okay, well... I mean, I didn't get frozen, but man, it keeps using Blizzard. So, that's Laurelie now defeated for a second time. And against Bruno, I'm going to be a whole lot smarter. There was a really easy way to avoid what almost happened the last time, and that's, well, you've seen it already multiple times, using the badge boost glitch to increase my speed, and special, not that that matters as much, so that I'm not outsped by Hitmonlee, and I don't need to worry about jump kick. Even if I were, I would have more defense, which would be nice. 
And so that's exactly what I do, and of course, I can't do math properly, and I level up instead of right after the Hitmonlee, right before. So I do have a lot more defense, but that speed boost I was hoping for is gone. Of course, it goes for high jump kick, and oh, well, I guess defense curl helped just being defense curl. Nice! No badge boost glitch even needed. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty cool. So Bruno is going to be defeated. Even submission, I'm not overly worried about. Not that that's probable. And of course, after we defeat Onyx number two, we get Leer. So that brings us right back to the Agatha Lottery. And I do think I got really unlucky last time. So I'm thinking with just average luck, considering how good my HP is, it should be fine, question mark? Well, immediately, great luck. We get the swap. So that's a free defense curl and a little bit extra speed. Now, Golbat can use Haze, which would be very, very bad. So I'm just going to use Psychic to knock it out, and that's one down. Now, I don't think I'll outspeed this Gengar, and of course, of course. All right, well, of course, Hypnosis have to hit there, and I'm still asleep, so this is going to be fun. Nightshade, all right, still sleeping. All right, Confuse Ray, that's pretty bad. Uh, at least I woke up, but now I'm confused. All right, Dream Eater is literally the best thing it can use while I'm awake, and I'm going to try Defense Girl. Maybe I'm going to outspeed now. Just to be safe or greedy, I guess. Let's go for one more, and I'm out speeding. That's great. And another Dream Eater miss. So I think I only have one more turn I can be confused, and we could sweep through Agatha. All right, I don't snap out. I hit myself. Nightshade is fine, but this should be the battle. Confuse no more. Psychic. One down. We should easily outspeed and one hit KO the Haunter. That's two down. The same thing should be true of Arbok. Yes, three down, and now just the final Gengar, no hypnosis on this one, so we should be in the clear, and we get a crit. <laughs> okay, all right. So we've made it past the Agatha lottery, but that does not guarantee anything because Lance has plenty of Pokemon with very high attack, and I have very bad defense. So this could be bad. I do have Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, but the question is, will I be able to outspeed and survive the onslaught of Lance's Sword of Dragon Pokemon? Let's see. The first Pokemon is non-Dragon Gyarados, and we outspeed. That's huge. I think Hyper Beam would have one-hit KO'd if it would have gone first and hit. So the fact they outspeed at level 64, enormous. I cannot overstate that. One down. And if I outspeed Gyarados, I'm probably going to outspeed Dragonair. And I do. So that's going to be two down. And three down. But now we have Aerodactyl. Thankfully, it does not know Hyper Beam. If it did, that would be really bad. It does know Bite. No crit. It gets a lot of those. And Bite didn't do nearly as much. So even a critical hit Hyper Beam may not have knocked me out based on that damage. I'm not sure. Who cares? We've knocked out Aerodactyl. I'm not overly worried about Dragonite. I believe it's actually slower than Gyarados, and yes, I outspeed. Ice Beam is easily going to one hit KO, and we have made it to the champion. And thus far, we've matched up exceptionally well against the champion. Will Chansey be able to defeat him on its first attempt? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's try. Now, the first thing I should mention is I leveled up right after I defeated Dragonite, meaning I won't level up for a while. So let's set up defense curls, all six if we can. Pidgeot has wing attack, which I'm not too worried about, and sky attack, which I am very worried about. But it can also use whirlwind, which is useless, and mirror move, which is useless. And wouldn't you know, while I set up four defense curls, that is all Pidgeot will do. I decide, all right, time for Thunderbolt, and of course, knock out Pidgeot. That is one now. Next, a Pokemon I'm worried about. Alakazam, I go for Thunderbolt, over half, Psychic is what I was worried about, no special drop, alright, that's massive, two down without a special drop, and this could be it, Rhydon is an easy one hit KO with probably either Psychic or Ice Beam, which is of course what I use, three down, next comes out Arcanine with its massive attack and takedown, I'm a little worried, I go for Psychic, and... I don't get the special drop. I don't know what I was thinking there. Probably Thunderbolt. Oh, no. No! Okay. Wow. Well, critical hit, takedown. It did knock itself out due to recoil, but the complexion of this battle has changed 
dramatically with one bad, unlucky critical hit. We have two left, Executor and Blastoise. And Executor can possibly put me to sleep. And of course, I have now leveled up, so all those gains I made in my special through Defense Curl are gone now. Yikes. And with Executor's massive special, I doubt this will. It's not a 1 KO. Please don't. No. All right, Chansey, please wake up. Please wake up. No. All right, Barrage. Okay, that's not such a big deal. Thankfully, Defense Curl did raise my defense. So that's actually going to be very helpful. All right, wake up here. No. All right, another Barrage. Way better than Stomp. Okay, just over 100 HP. Please wake up. No dice. Stomp. Oh, that did a lot of damage. Come on, wake up. Yes! Barrage is good. Yes! Barrage is very good. Oh my goodness. So I am going to knock out Executor, but will I have enough HP remaining to knock out the Blastoise, which should outspeed? All right, the moment of... Oh my god, I outsped. Oh my... No! <laughs> I don't knock it out! Alright, well now the moment of truth! Uh, retroactive full restore, great! Okay, let's try that again! Okay, maybe I get a crit? No, still not a 1 KO bite! Yes! Yes, that's great! Well, looks like the defense curls, while I was using them to boost my other stats, actually ended up winning me the battle due to raising my defense! A status move doing what it's supposed to do in Gen 1? Unheard of. But, at the end, after a really just brutal time getting through Brock, we just obliterated the rest of the game. Unfortunately, it was a little too late after a two hour and a half Mount Moon time, and we were able to keep it under six hours, just... That said, of all the non-first form Pokemon I've done to this point, that still is the slowest by quite a bit. Even though we're at the same level as Moltres, it took significantly longer. And I will put Chansey ahead of Slowpoke, just because it had such an easy time. You can make the case it could go ahead of Moltres, but I don't think that's fair. It, it took significantly longer. Although that Elite Four was, was pretty awesome. And, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the problem in Gen 1. Brock is just such an obstacle for so many of these normal Pokémon. But at the end of the day, I know this is a very highly requested Pokémon. I had a ton of fun. So, thank you guys for watching. I am now officially back. I don't know when the next video will be, but it will be prior to two months. I promise that. Take care.